You know, laptops and tablets these days have created a new market that I didn't know was going to exist in 2024, and that is a market for super fast external hard drives and enclosures. We're looking at the Orico AAGM2U4, which is the uh, ultra fast 40 gigabits per second, they call it. What does it say here on the box? The aluminum crystal M.2 SSD enclosure for everyone in England. Aluminium crystal. Yes. Thanks to Hookies for sponsoring this video. Now these are OEM Windows keys. That means that you do your own tech support. You're not going to be relying on Microsoft and they're generally locked to the hardware. We got a coupon code. Click on buy now. Put in coupon code TS25. Hit apply and that price comes down. Now when you compare that to the outrageous prices from Microsoft, you'd have to buy this many, many, many times to equal the price of one regular key from Microsoft. As of right now, this Windows 10 Pro key will unlock Windows 11. We also have Windows 10 Home. Windows 11, you can buy it directly. Windows 11 Home. And we have two flavors of Office. Once you're finished, all you have to do is click on your user account up here. Go to your user center. Click on My Purchase Orders. Just View, Keys, and Codes. Then you can just copy and paste your key. Hit Start. Type Activate. Click on Activation Settings. Paste it in there. Click on Next. And you will be activated. So head on over to hookies.com to get yourself an OEM Windows key at a price that makes sense. So this is a Thunderbolt 4 40 gigabits per second or USB 4 40 gigabits per second SSD enclosure for M.2 NVMe, uh, whatever. You can just pop them in there, get, get something fast and put it in there. So I got a fast drive here and we're going to test this out. Uh, the drive that I have is plenty fast enough to test this to its fullest potential. So first off, I want to go through all the different specs here and talk about what we're looking at. So we have USB-C on one side and again, it's 40 gigabits per second Thunderbolt or USB. It will take up to an 8 terabyte M.2. The case itself is shockproof. So it's actually really well made. There was a Kickstarter for this. So I uh, got some backers and they have a very, very, very sleek aluminum enclosure. So yeah, it feels good to the touch. And then we have our fan here for heat dissipation. You want to get the heat off of that, but that's not the only way. There's also a thermal pad and a little bit of a heat sink that goes on top of the thermal pad. And we'll talk about that when I talk about the performance and the uh, the heat dissipation. The transparent design, that's something that I kind of like. It'll use basically all of the different M.2 uh, formats up to 2280. So that's 2230, 2242, 2260, and 2280 will all fit in here. My drive is 2280. There's a little indicator light over here by the USB-C and it has an intelligent sleep mode. So if you don't use it for 10 minutes, it'll put this to sleep and your data will be fine. Your hard drive's just sitting there, but it doesn't, you know, it does that so there's no overheating or anything like that. It just puts it to sleep after 10 minutes of no use. Let's talk about installing the drive and then we'll get down to the test. So it's actually really easy. All you do is just slide it off, kind of like you're sliding off a battery case. Put your drive in, pop it back on there. It takes just a few seconds. And it's pretty cool when you're putting your uh, M.2 in there, there's no screws required. There are these little plastic, um, I, they're not grommets, but connectors, and they twist into place. So you just put them down there and then they kind of turn like a key and lock the drive in place so it's not going to come out. Above and beyond that, the Type-C plug that they have given us, it has a cool option. On one side it's Type-C and on the other side it's Type-C and Type-A. It's got Type-A and it's like a little adapter. You can pop that off and there's a Type-C under it so you'll be able to plug it up to whatever you want. It makes it really easy if you're going between multiple devices. Some are Type-A, some are Type-C. Just plug it in to whatever works. When I looked at the design initially, I've got a couple different things here that I've been messing with because I just tested. So I just looked at another one uh, from a brand called Acasis and it was on sale for 125 bucks. So it's only, you know, like a little bit more expensive than you can get this one for like, I think a hundred bucks right now on Amazon, but prices may change. Go ahead and check the description to see what the current prices are. That one had a full on, you know, like USB. It was a full on hub plus the 40 gigabits per second Thunderbolt 3, not 4, but USB 4. So it had all that. But one thing that was different between the two is that one has a thermal pad and then a big, you know, piece of metal that lays right on top of the drive and then a fan that cools that. This one, it just has the spot for the M.2, the viewing window right here, and then you can put your thermal pad on there and put your little heat sink. But uh, the heat sink, it's very thin. It does not have a lot of thermal mass. It's much better than nothing. And a lot of people just run these with nothing. But just note that it doesn't have a lot of thermal mass. And then the fan is not directly on top. It's not blowing right on to the M.2. It's exhausting a lot of that heat out because you need to be moving air through. So what's going to happen is it's going to create a tunnel where air comes in one side and displaces and goes out the other, which is good, but it gets warm. So let's do the tests and just see how warm it gets. 
All right, so the first test I wanted to do was in Linux. So I loaded up Fedora, KDisk Mark before, but these results were kind of interesting to me. So I don't know, maybe I need to do some more testing, but the the reads look insane. 5,578. Uh, with this drive that I have in there, I would expect the writes to be better than 686. So let's hop on over into Windows and see what we get. But yeah, it did work in Linux and really freaking fast. And there you can see our random IOPS as well. So what I like to do is get a bunch of tests and just do them all in order. And then we'll check the temperatures, uh, you know, after it's doing that. So I've got, so I've got crystal disk mark here and I've also going to be running crystal disk info and we'll just see. But you can see the reads are already looking pretty good. Now these scores look about more like what I would, uh, was expecting. 3703 and 3518 on the read and the write respectively. So pretty good performance there for USB 4. And there you can see the IOPS on the screen. All right, now one thing I noticed is, you know, as I'm, as I'm running them, the temperature just kept going up. And if I ran another test, it would go up a little more. So I kept stressing and stressing, you know, because it was kind of like, okay, the fan's running. You can hear it. It's not too loud, but you can hear it. So let's keep running tests. And it would go up a little more. So now we're in the 60s. It's just not a big deal. 60s are not a big deal. You know, the, the maximum for a drive for most M.2 is somewhere in the 80s. So as long as it doesn't get up to the 80s, then it's not that big of a deal. Now here we're doing Addo Benchmark, which is another benchmark. So as you can see right there, 3.4 gigabytes per second. And then over here on the right, 3.3 gigabytes per second. Now, after all that, I let it cool down for just a minute, but I decided to transfer a couple hundred gigabytes worth of stuff. And, you know, I just want to see how hot it gets on the second 100, because I did 100, you know, gigabytes twice. The second time it just keeps going up. So this little case is just it's getting too hot to getting really close to that 80 mark right there. I feel like there's probably better ways to keep things cool. But to be fair, I mean, it does have a fan. It didn't get to 80. You know, that's when my alarm goes off. If it hits 80, I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. 85 is like the point where they start to kind of like shut down and stuff. And I've actually had some other enclosures that don't have any cooling. After you use them for a long time, if you're transferring a bunch of stuff, they'll just suddenly disconnect. And it's like, what happened? Oh, it overheated. Well, that never happened here. So there's nothing to worry about when it comes to like overheating. I don't think it's going to ever get to that point. Maybe if you stress it out all day long, but it just, it kept climbing and climbing until we got to 77. That's hotter than I expected this to get. And the reason that that's hotter, I mean, it's still within spec, so it's okay. It works. I want to compare this right now to the Acasis that I just looked at, which again, like I said, it's about 25 bucks more. It was on sale for 125 last week, um, but it has like the full on hub around it and it ran at basically the same speeds, but almost every test, it was 20 to 30 degrees cooler, 20 to 30 degrees cooler. So this method of running air through here with the very thin heat sink on top, it works, but it does not work like having a giant piece of metal with a fan on the bottom blowing on the metal. That's just, there's just so much more thermal mass with the Acasis. So this is smaller, it's not as heavy, but when you compare it to the slightly more expensive, the slightly bigger a cases, well, it just does, doesn't do as good of a job when it comes to cooling. As far as performance goes, it's great. And if you're gonna be playing video games, perfect. That's, I mean, this is perfect for something like just playing video games, editing files. Even if you're editing movies, it's not like you're zipping stuff back and forth the entire time. You don't buy a drive enclosure or a hard drive just to take it home and run benchmarks all day. That's stupid, who, who would do that? But seriously, that's not what these are for. And that's, I don't think anybody's really using them that way. And they're also not made to be like used to transfer files over and over and over and over and over again. You're not gonna be transferring gigabytes and gigabytes of files all the time. If you do, it will get hot. The Acasis didn't get hot, but I don't think that's a realistic use case scenario. So I'm not sure if that's something that would really push me away from this. It's gonna be up to you. I think the size might be more important to some people. And the fact that this gets 20 to 30 degrees hotter during the same tests, it doesn't matter to some people because it stays within spec. And most of you, it's gonna stay in the 50s or 60s, which is warm, but completely normal for an M.2. And you can play your games and use your computer, use Linux, use Windows or whatever, and it'll be just fine. So while I do think there are probably some better ideas when it comes to cooling, I don't know about like, what I would do differently in a, something that's this small because it's a hell of a lot better than the stuff that doesn't have a fan, doesn't have cooling, it doesn't get disconnect, and it does uh, feel like a quality product. So it's easy to use, easy to travel with, love the size, love the style. I think for most people, the heat's not gonna be that big of a deal. So I, I can recommend this if you need the full on hub 
and you're doing some heavy duty stuff, look at the Acasis. But for the rest of you, if you want something smaller, this is a very good way to go. So let me know what you think of the AA GM2U4. Is that what it was? Yes. Let me know what you think of this in the always description. That's where I put stuff. You put stuff in the comments. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. And don't forget, we've still got some sales going on. I'm trying to get rid of all, all those shirts back there. They got to go because I got to go out of America. And they, 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 they're they not going with me. So click over here. 50% off all the shirts that we have on this page here. These are all the things I have in stock. I've restocked some stuff. So if you didn't get the WAS shirt, you didn't get the HEV suit, Gaben, which is pixel art and awesome. Well, now you can. You can get these things now. I, I, <laughs> I love this design. It's ridiculous. Uh, half price. And the coupon code is shirtly not. Also have these two things on sale for half price. So head on over to epicpants.com and I'll see you in the comments. Mm -hmm.